The central core of the wheel is the hub. On its strength rests the strength of the entire wheel. The hub is a shaped cylinder of wood, usually oak, with a hole bored through its axis to receive the metal bearing. The rectangular holes around the outside are mortises, which receive the tenons of the spokes. Hubs begin as small trees, which are cut into lengths of about one foot. They are then bored lengthwise, which at this stage serves also to help in the drying of the log. After the hubs are bored, they're debarked on a lathe. This one once was used in the manufacture of wooden automobile wheels, a line which continued to support the industry for a short time after the demise of horse-drawn vehicles. After debarking, the hub is seasoned for a month or more, depending on its size. It is then turned to the proper shape. At Hoops, there still exists an automatic lathe for this purpose, but the skilled hands needed to set the machine up no longer are here. So the chore is performed on a simple manual wood turning lathe. The hub then receives a series of metal bands which are pressed on to strengthen it and keep it from cracking. As you recall, the spoke ends are rectangular, and so the hub must have a series of rectangular holes to receive the spokes. First, a regular series of round holes is drilled into the hub. These are then made rectangular by a reciprocating chisel or mortiser. These holes are called mortises. All the parts of the wheel have now been manufactured and are ready to be fitted together. First, the spokes are pounded into the hub. On lighter wheels, this is done with a mallet. On heavier ones, a pneumatic hammer is used. For obvious reasons, the hub and spoke assembly is called a spider. The spokes are then trimmed to a uniform length and their outer ends machined into tenons. In this case, the tenons are round and will fit into the hole previously drilled into the fellow. One rectangular mortise and tenon joint is all that's needed to keep the spoke from rotating in the finished wheel. The fellows are fitted to the spider on the rimming machine. Mechanical pressure is applied to bring the two together, and when the process is finished, the wheel is essentially formed. Next, the outer tread is sanded, and so too are the sides of the rim. Although it would be possible to fit the wheel to a vehicle at this point, the hub and tread surfaces soon would wear, and the wheel would have to be replaced. Indeed, this was just the case with the earliest wheels, until such practices as driving large-headed nails into the outer rim were devised to prolong the life of the wheel. But it was not until the 19th century that the one-piece iron or steel hoop tire was developed. It has remained the most commonly used tire on these wheels since then. The hoop tire is measured from steel flat stock by rolling the wheel one revolution along it. Only the expert eye knows how much extra to allow for shrinkage in the welding process. The measured and cut stock is then fed through a bending machine to make it circular and then the tire is sent out to be welded at a local shop. The welding forges at Hoops, Brother and Darlington have been silent for some time now. Another series of skills that have been lost.
When the welded tires return, they're slipped over their respective wheels. If the fit is tight, the workman resorts to the hammer. The next step is to permanently bond the tire to the wheel in a hydraulic upsetting machine. This machine compresses the tire uniformly from all directions. 